following message was preached from the pulpit of Bible Baptist Church, Oak Harbor, Washington. Well, if you'll take your Bibles this morning and turn to the book of Acts chapter number 16. Acts chapter number 16. This morning I'd like to read a passage out of this chapter beginning in verse number 6 and we'll read on down to verse number 12. Acts chapter 16, verse number 6 through 12. The Bible says now, When they had gone throughout Phrygia and the region of Galatia and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia, after they were come to Mycenae, they essayed to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit suffered them not. And they, passing by Mycenae, came down to Troas, and a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him, saying, Come over into Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavoured to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. Therefore, loosing from Troas, we came with a straight course to Samothracia, and the next day to Neapolis, and from thence to Philippi, which is the chief city of that part of Macedonia, and a colony, and we were in that city abiding certain days. You know, one of the most exciting things in any Christian's life is when God begins to move in our hearts, in our lives. Many of you have experienced that this year from testimonies that you have shared with me that God did something in your life this year and that's always an exciting thing when you begin to see God move. When you see God changing aspects of your life and conforming you more to the image of his son Jesus Christ or when you are reading through the scriptures and some precious truth leaps out of the word of God and it seems like it's just there for you. I'm reminded of the excitement that comes when we Uh, hear from God in a very personal way. Uh, For example, in Psalm 119 and verse number 162, the psalmist said, I rejoice at thy word as one that findeth great spoil. And you can imagine the excitement when you're digging into God's word and it is not just a mundane reading of scripture uh, that sometimes uh, accompanies our Bible reading, but it is something that leaps out, that's something that grabs a hold of you. And uh, God is, it's as if God is just speaking directly to you. I'm reminded of the, the words of the, uh, the uh, bride in uh, Song of Solomon, chapter 5. As she is separated from her beloved bridegroom. And in uh, chapter 5 and verse 4, she says, My beloved put his hand by the hole of the door, and my bowels were moved for him. Just the thought that Jesus Christ was coming into uh, into. Uh, uh, a reality in, in a part of our life uh, is, is certainly very, very exciting. And uh, I hope that you have experienced that this year as you look back over the year and you think about all the things that God has done. Certainly here at this, in the church as a body, I believe that we have seen God working in many, many different ways. And as we read here in this text, I, I believe that Paul and his uh, associates must have felt much the same when uh, after trying this door and trying this other door, all finding them closed by the Holy Ghost, that now God has made it clear what his will is uh, for this particular team of preachers. And uh, I think there must have been an excitement about that. You know, when God reveals his will for you, that is a, a, a landmark in your life. It is something that God does in our life that uh, we can look back on and say on this time, this time of my life, God really uh, worked me over. God did a, a great thing for me uh, and, and God has put his calling upon me in some way. Uh, praise the Lord for that. Well, you can imagine the excitement that must have taken place when that vision appeared to Paul and, uh, and Silas and Luke and Timothy were in on that. How uh, it, it meant something because God had uh, shown them the way ahead. Uh, We see here that um, this uh, particular passage of scripture fits in with what is usually referred to as the second missionary journey of Paul, uh, the second evangelistic journey that he had taken, as as we have recorded for us in the book of Acts. 
And uh, it begins with uh, two men who go forth out of the church at Antioch. If you'll cast your eyes back up to chapter number 15 and verse number 40, uh, the Bible says that Paul chose Silas and departed, being recommended by the brethren unto the grace of God. And this is how evangelism is to be done, where the church will send forth men to go forth together and to begin to preach the word of God. The Bible says they were sent forth. They were recommended by the brethren. And, and that word for recommended, the Greek word is, is a word that means that they, they, uh, they gave them up. They, they were willing to give up these two men who were faithful preachers in the church to allow the Holy Spirit to lead them uh, to go forth and to evangelize and to preach the gospel. And uh, we, f- we find that when they were sent out by the, the church, that uh, the church obviously took care of them financially, uh, that they didn't have to go around and visit other churches to raise funds, but they were taken care of and God provided for their needs. And in chapter number 16, they picked up a young man by the name of Timothy, and, and he would go forth with Paul, according to verse number 3, uh, that uh, P- Paul would have him travel with them, And uh, we see here God's plan for training men, that they were mentored by older preachers. The the things that thou hast heard of me, Paul wrote wrote to Timothy, among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. And, uh, And as they went forth, they began with a strengthening ministry. If you look in chapter 16 and verse number 5, they went around the different churches that had already been established Uh, in earlier days and uh, they increased in faith and they increased in number daily. So God was doing a great work at this time. But then we find that they begin to go into unreached areas. They begin to to go into areas and the Bible says in verse 6 and verse number 7 that they were forbidden by the Holy Ghost to preach in these areas. Now you can imagine what that must have done to the thinking of these men who were dedicated, who were sold out to Jesus Christ to uh, be able to go and preach the gospel and yet God was shutting doors. And sometimes God does that and we know that uh, when God shuts doors it's for a reason. Uh, These areas were later reached with the gospel of Christ but it wasn't God's timing. But then we're introduced to to, uh, the famous Macedonian call. Uh, We often refer to that there in verse number 9, and a vision appeared to Paul in the night, and there stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him, saying, come over into Macedonia to help us. And this was God's way of leading this team of preachers, these men, into taking the gospel and actually opening up the gospel uh, for the continent of Europe because they left the the Asian side and went across uh, the... um, Uh, the Aegean Sea and ended up in what is now part of Europe and so the gospel was spread by the leading of the Holy Spirit. And uh, you can imagine the excitement that would have been felt at that time. Perhaps after days of traveling and trying this door and days of traveling and saying, well, maybe we can do a work here and yet the Spirit was just shutting the doors and now in that vision in the night we find that uh, God had opened the door and they knew that this is where we're to go. As I say, when God does that in your life, as an individual believer, a child of God, it's always exciting to see God's hand moving and working in your life. Uh, We ought to have an expectation that God will do that. I don't think God wants us just to be sitting around in a pew week after week and really just going through the motions of being a Christian. He wants to do something vital and and vibrant in our lives that we can really uh, enjoy all that God has for us. Well, this is what happened here, and uh, in verses 9 and 10, I want to focus chiefly on these verses uh, today, but I want, there, there are three words that I want us to think about for a moment uh, here in verses 9 and 10. Uh, three words. The first word is in verse 9, and that's the word vision. And the Bible says, and a vision appeared to Paul in the night. Now, let me say this, that, that missions requires a vision. There has to be a vision an understanding of what God wants. I would define a vision as seeing the world as God sees the world. And certainly that can be very, very different to the way that you and I would ordinarily look at the world around us, how we see people, how we see societies, how we see cultures. 
We need to see it as God sees it. And, you know, the Bible tells us in the book of 1 Samuel that the Lord looketh not on the outward appearance, but God looks on the heart. And while people may appear outwardly to be doing just fine in this life, they have a soul that's going to spend eternity somewhere. Jesus said to his disciples when they did not get the vision, when he was dealing with that woman of Samaria, he said in John chapter 4 and verse number 35, Say not ye, there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest? Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. And beloved, if we're going to continue as a mission-minded and a mission-active church, we have to have a vision. Now, granted, God's not going to give us a vision in a dream in the night. God does not reveal truth to us in dreams or visions today because we have the completed word of God. But I'll guarantee that God will give a vision to our church. And honestly, about three and a half years ago, God began to give Bible Baptist Church a vision for the islands of the South Pacific. You know, there are, there are many, many people in that part of the world. It's a vast area of the planet. But there are at least nine major Polynesian nations and four Mel- Melanesian nations that are there in the South Pacific totaling over 2.75 million souls. Many of them are religious, but most of them are lost, and they need to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so God has given us as a church a vision for that part of the world, and I thank God for that. I, I rejoice, just as Paul and Silas and Timothy and Luke must have just shouted for joy when God gave that vision to them. So the first word I want you to think about is this word vision. But then in verse number 10, there's another word that's important, and that is the word immediately. The Bible says, and after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia. You know, when God speaks to us, we have to put action to, uh, to uh, the things that we're doing. Uh, God gave the vision to, to Paul. He was the team leader. But once he made known to his fellow preachers what God had shown him the Bible says they immediately began to take steps to do what God had commanded them to do by the way that's the response of faith you know if God is working in your life whether it be in some area of ministry here in this church or even in a greater calling you need to respond to God's word Uh, We as a church need not to sit on our hands and say, well, we kind of know God wants us to go into this part of the world, but we'll get around to it someday. No, we have to take steps. We have to do what God is calling us to do. Once we have that vision, there needs to be an immediate response of faith. We need to act immediately. By the way, if God is showing you things in the Bible, maybe he's convicting you of certain things in your life that need to be removed, put out of your life, Uh, and you need to to turn your life around, you need to act immediately. So many times we procrastinate. We say, yes, 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 I know that God wants me to to change my ways. He wants me to do things a little differently according to his word, but I'll get around to it someday. You know what happens? You never get around to it, and you just go on. And so if God is dealing with you in any issue in your life, may I encourage you today to be immediate in your response, to do what God is calling you to do. And then the third word I want you to notice in verse number 10 is the word endeavoured. We have the word vision, immediately, and endeavoured. The Bible says immediately we endeavoured to go into Macedonia. That word endeavoured just simply means that they took definite steps of action toward doing what God had called them to do. They began to make plans. They began to look for a way. And so the endeavor here is very, very important, that uh, we don't just know what God has, uh, has revealed to us and what God's plan is, whether it's for my personal life or for our, us as a church, but we do something about it. We endeavor. Now, a year ago, as, uh, as we had our Vision Sunday, uh, I was uh, blessed to be able to bring the message uh, on that uh, December day. And, and uh, you might recall, and it's certainly been very evident this year, that uh, a two-pronged plan or two-pronged vision was presented to the church. We had an emphasis and we had an endeavour. And uh, the emphasis, of course, was that 
in 2017, we would focus much on prayer. And uh, the endeavor was that in 2017, we would take, as a church, we would take definite steps to begin reaching into the South Pacific Islands. <clears throat> now, when it comes to prayer, all I can say is glory to God. And I hope you can too. We have seen God do some wonders in our midst in answer to prayer. We've, we've uh, emphasized prayer through having weekly prayer requests, key prayer requests every week that we've made known to the congregation. I believe God has honored that, the prayers that have been lifted up in those areas. We've had a monthly lesson on the subject of prayer across the Sunday school. We've had a half night of prayer. We've uh, had prayer meetings and different aspects. And I believe from the testimonies that I've heard that God is doing a deeper work in, in so many lives in our church. I hope you can say amen to that, that, yeah, my prayer life has really taken a, a great leap forward because we've emphasized prayer. And we emphasize prayer for the simple reason, as the Bible says, and Jesus said, without me you can do nothing. And anything that we would try to do or anything that you would try to do, if you're trying to do it yourself, you're going to fail. But if you'll just let the Lord work through you and, and, and depend upon him and we express that dependence in our prayers to God, you'll find that God will give you great victory. And so we, we certainly uh, thank the Lord for that. And, and, and I've seen as a pastor, I've seen God working in, in many lives. I've seen God turning lives around. You were heading in a certain direction and God has done a work in your life. And, and I've seen men stepping up to take positions that are going to uh, come open here very, very soon and, and needs that we have in the church. Then there's been a tremendous spirit in our church. <clears throat> and I, I put it down to prayer. It's certainly uh, no, no man can take the credit for it. It's, it's all of the Lord. And, and praise the praise Lord. Looking back over this past year and the, and the emphasis that we had on prayer... Uh, I thank God for, for him honoring that emphasis. But we also had an endeavor. And the endeavor, as I said, was that somewhere in 2017, we would take definite steps to begin reaching out into the South Pacific Islands. And, uh, you know, God has really blessed in that area as well. Um, the two great needs for anything to happen, they both begin with the letter M, manpower and money. <laughs> Uh, it sounds rather crass to, to maybe talk about that, but that's, the, that's what we need. If we're going to reach out into the South Pacific, we need men who will go and we need money to be able to send them. Of course, there's prayer comes into that. And, you know, God has provided in miraculous ways uh, the funds that uh, we need to be able to send a team into the South Pacific. God has done that. I mean, as I've said many, many times over, there's no rich people in Bible Baptist Church unless you're hiding something from me, but I know. <laughs> We're all average people. Many of you are on military pay grades, and so you don't have an abundance of money, but you have a heart that loves souls and you love the Lord. And people I know are giving sacrificially, and, and uh, God is honoring that in your life, and God is using that, and he has provided the, the means whereby we are able to actually accomplish what we want to do. And uh, manpower, well... God has raised up a team uh, to uh, be the ones who will go over and, and uh, by the middle of this coming year, they'll, they'll be there in the South Pacific. Uh, that's an amazing accomplishment. Uh, we had, uh, in the month of August, the preachers of the church got together uh, for what we called it a futures forum. We said it's time for us to, to, to get down and to do some fasting and prayer and, and seek what God wants us to do. And God revealed uh, that we should be sending these men and uh, uh, th those that are with them to go into the uh, South Pacific and identified a team. So that's what God has done in response to the vision that we presented a year ago, the emphasis on prayer and the endeavor to take steps. And all of this was capped off with an absolutely amazing trip to the South Pacific this November and into December. You know, what was originally intended to be just a preaching trip for my wife and I to go on, not that she was preaching, but, uh, you know, <laughs> it really turned into much more than just me going there and preaching. Now, we got to preach and so forth, and, but it, it became an exploratory trip for the team that is planning to move there. They got to go over and start looking at the cost of living and all of the, 
uh, all of the um, logistics of what it's going to take to move there. That was a very valuable time. It, it became a survey trip as well as some of us went across into the Solomon Islands and began to look at other places in the South Pacific. Uh, it, was, it was used of the Lord not only as, uh, to explore and to, uh, to survey, but honestly it was a life-changing trip as well. In the, in the lives of those who went on the trip. And, and I, commencing next Sunday, you're going to start hearing testimonies and reports from those that went on the trip. And I hope that you will plan to be here every single Sunday because it's going to be exciting. Yeah, they'll have some pictures to show, but they'll, re, they'll share with you what God did in their life and what they see as the need in the South Pacific. God used that trip in a way I think that was beyond my expectation or hope, but God knows what he's doing. Praise the Lord for that. And so as we look back over this year and the vision that we had, the emphasis on prayer and the endeavor to, to start reaching out into the South Pacific, God has met us more than we deserve and certainly more than perhaps we even realized. But what about 2018? What are we going to do this coming year? Because that's what I'm supposed to be preaching on and letting you know. So what is the vision for this coming year? Well, I think it should be no surprise to most, if not all of you, <clears throat> that we know what we're going to be doing. We know what our emphasis is, and, and, and that is simply that by the middle of 2018, our team will be in place in Fiji. And you say, why are they going to Fiji? Well, because it's a good place for them to learn to adjust to the climate and to the culture. It may not be where they'll end up. We don't know. That's up to the Holy Spirit. But that's where they're going to begin. And yes, the, the climate is different. It takes a little getting used to. It's very hot there. It's very humid there. And, uh, and, and there is a cultural difference that uh, our men need to and, and the family need to, to understand so that they don't get frustrated with the way people are there. Wonderful people, but they need the gospel. And uh, so that's the plan, and by the middle of this year, you'll see it as we uh, let you know some of the events for the coming year, that uh, there is a date certain when they're going to be sent out, and uh, they'll be there uh, right at the, be at the middle of the, of the year. And, uh, you know, God has opened doors in that regard uh, for, uh, for, this, uh, for our team. Number one, they have a place where they can not only... Uh, sit and soak, soak up the sun and the humidity and where they can learn the culture but they have a place prepared where they'll be able to serve the Lord. Uh, they'll be uh, involved somewhat with uh, City Baptist Church in Suva and uh, God, we're still working on all of the details for that uh, and there is some things that uh, I'm not right at this particular point of time at liberty to be able to divulge uh, because it involves another church uh, but I can tell you that God has prepared the way so that uh, Brother Levi and Brother Solomon uh, won't just sit there and twiddle their thumbs, but they'll actually have ministry which will help them to adjust to the ways of the Fijian people and the South Pacific Islanders, and it will just be a, a, a training time for them, preparing them for wherever God is going to lead them on. So that's what we're going to be doing in 2018. It's really... No new direction, no new, uh, no new uh, 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 vision here. It's just continuing what God has already started. And so I have a theme for the year, and it's taken here for, from verse number 10. Uh, in Acts chapter 16 and verse number 10, the Bible says, And after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us, for to preach the gospel unto them. And our theme as a church for 2018 is those two words, assuredly gathering, assuredly gathering. Um, you know, these words carry a lot of import uh, with them. Uh, there's only one word in the Greek, but it carries the thought of a unity of purpose, first of all, that we as a church must remain united in the purpose of evangelism and preaching the gospel in that part of the world. But it also carries the thought of striving together, striving together. I'm reminded of the scripture in first, uh, excuse me, in Philippians chapter one, 
and verse number 27 where Paul wrote to that church and said, only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs that ye stand fast in one spirit with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. And assuredly gathering has that concept to it that Paul and his team knew what God wanted them to do they had an assurance about it and so they gathered themselves together to accomplish that the word assuredly speaks of our confidence that we have in what Jesus Christ wants for his church isn't it great to know that you know that that is how it ought to be in in every aspect of the Christian life that we know what God says We shouldn't have a hesitation about it. And as a church, I believe we do know what God wants us to do. We have that assurance. And the word gathering, as I said, is an action word that's exemplified there in verse number 11. Assuredly gathering in verse 11 of chapter 16, therefore, loosing from Troas, we came with a straight course to Samothracia and the next day to Neapolis. They made a beeline for where God wanted them to go. They didn't take the long route. They had a straight course and it was the next day they got on with it. That's what gathering really has to, has to, uh, what it means. So what our theme for 2018 means is that number one, we know what the Lord wants Bible Baptist Church to do. That's the assuredly. So let's do it. Let's execute the plan. Now, let me say a couple of things about assuredly gathering. Number one, assuredly gathering does bring an expectation of success. And I define success as God's blessings. We're not talking about numbers or numbers of souls saved, although that's our desire. not talking about numbers of churches established or preachers trained. But I do believe that as we launch out with this assuredly gathering mindset that we can expect God's blessings now of course we don't know what will transpire over the next several years Uh, after a period of adjustment God may move our team to another South Pacific island where they can actually begin a a full uh, court press ministry the the whole region is wide open it's almost like you could take the proverbial dart and just throw it at a map of the South Pacific and wherever that dart lands there's a need So we don't know what God is going to do. He may keep them in Fiji where they'll begin to plant churches there. And uh, you'll certainly hear uh, through the testimony of our men that there is a great need in Fiji. Uh, We were given a, a tour of the island, the main island, and we could see what the need was. But that's up to the Holy Ghost. That's not up to me or anyone here Uh, or even our team members making decisions, but to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. We shall also be looking to form up other teams. How about that? (laughs) One team isn't going to do it all. We need others. We need men who will surrender to God's call on their life and who will say, I want to be trained, I want to be prepared, And, uh, and we'll be doing that. And, you know, we can expect that the Lord will use us. Paul and, and his team, when they were assuredly gathering, they saw churches planted in Philippi. In chapter 16, when they went to Philippi, we know that a church was established there. And it was a very influential church. The book of Philippians tells us that. In chapter 17, churches were established in Thessalonica and also in Berea. In chapter number 18, a church was established at Corinth. All of these churches were prominent in the New Testament. So God did a work through these men. There was that spiritual success. They accomplished what God was wanting, souls to be saved, following the Lord in baptism and uh, formed into an organized assembly of baptized believers or a New Testament church. Not only that, but during that same journey, a beachhead for the gospel was established in Ephesus and Paul came back with Titus and others the third time, and a great church was built there in Ephesus. So yes, beloved, we can expect success. Now, throughout January, uh, you're going to hear about the great needs of the South Pacific in that part of the world. And I'm just excited to see what God is going to do, not only this year, 
but down the, in, the, in the future. Because God is calling our, our church to focus particularly in that area. Now, I know that we also have the, the uh, Caribbean islands and God is doing something there. So, I mean, there's just opportunities opening doors for us and we can assuredly gather that God will bless the efforts of Bible Baptist Church. But the second thing I want to point out is that assuredly gathering does not always mean smooth sailing. We have to face reality. We have to be realistic that in this endeavor, there will always be obstacles and difficulties. For the team going to Fiji in the middle of this year, just getting them to the field, there'll be problems along the way. And when they get on the field, they're going to have to deal with government red tape and setting up a life in that part of the world. There'll be struggles, there'll be doubts, there'll be oppositions coming from different angles. We can expect that. And for our church, as we hold the ropes, there'll be tests in our church to maintain a unity of purpose among the brethren and to fill the holes that are left behind when these men finally leave us. There's going to be ministry opportunities and I'm glad that some of you are already saying, yes, I'll step up. Praise the Lord, that's what we need to do. But there will be issues that we have to deal with. For all their success that we saw in planting those churches, Paul and those that were with him experienced much tribulation. I hope this doesn't happen to our team, but they were shamefully entreated at Philippi. You know the story of how through their preaching they got the merchants upset and they were beaten soundly and then thrust into the innermost part of the prison. That can happen. Thessalonica, was the whole city was set on an uproar by certain lewd fellows that were put up to it by the Jews. And Paul was literally run out of town. Same with Berea. In Athens, when Paul preached, he was mocked and ridiculed. These are not easy things and there are difficulties that will be associated with what we're endeavouring to do. In Corinth, he was hauled before the Roman deputy and falsely accused. He faced a lot. These men faced a lot and our men will face a lot because there's always a cost to serving Jesus Christ. And so it's in imperative that when these times come, whether it's with our team or here in our own church holding the ropes that we do hold fast. That's what assuredly gathering means. Do you understand? It means God doesn't change his mind. God has given us this course, so we must follow it. But it also means that you and I have to stand faithfully upon the ramparts of prayer. Just because we finished an emphasis on prayer for 2017 doesn't mean that we stop emphasizing prayer. In reality, we need to pray more. And we need to hold the ropes in prayer and we need to be diligent in praying that uh, these who are being sent out, that they will have free course. The word of God would have free course. We need to pray that we'll keep up the finances and continue to pray that the Lord would send forth laborers into his harvest field. Nothing changes when it comes to prayer and especially when we send these men out. You know, in keeping with this theme of assuredly gathering, 2018 for Bible Baptist Church is going to see a continued emphasis on world evangelism. Through the Philippines Baptist Outreach with brother and sister Wally, through the North Central Washington Baptist Outreach with brother Majors and brother McDowell and their families over in Wenatchee, and also the Jamaica Baptist Outreach that begins here in a few days when Brother McDowell goes across to Jamaica to begin teaching preachers uh, the word of God over there. And then our South Pacific Baptist Outreach, which uh, gets underway really on the 1st of January, but the men will be sent at the middle of the year. We'll see an intensification in training of men through our Bible Training Institute. Men, if you're thinking anything about preparing your life to serve Christ, this is where you need to be and we'll give you every opportunity to be trained in the word of God, ready to serve him. We'll be handing out some bookmarks here in just a few moments that'll give you a list of all of the main events that have been planned for the year. And after our lunchtime today at the men's church administration meeting, we'll be presenting for approval the stewardship plans 
for 2018. And we'll be asking the men of the church to approve the financial arrangements and outlay, outlays that we believe are necessary to send this team to the South Pacific. We'll make this a new year, but a year of continuing to press on with what Christ has led us to do. And we need to start the year by making this assuredly gathering more than just a slogan, more than just some pretty words that we can put on different things, but to make it a reality to the glory of God. And I hope that if not already, but soon, you'll assuredly gather. This is what God wants for Bible Baptist Church. And then as we think of perhaps more on a personal level, what about you today? Is there something that you know that God wants you to do? And uh, you can't get away from it because God's just making it so clear in his word. It may be to step out by faith and give your life to Christ for something. It may be to step back in faith and stop doing some things in your life that need to get out of your life as a Christian. Maybe it's that you need to be saved. You've never been born again the Bible way. But you know you need to be saved. You know that if you died today, that you have no Bible-based assurance that you would go to heaven to be with Christ. Maybe to rededicate your life, to quit playing games with God and to get serious about the work of the Lord and serving him. He gave everything for you. Maybe you just need to turn your life over to him and repent and turn from what it is that's hindering you. This is what assuredly gathering should mean to us. I want to challenge you as individual believers, members of Bible Baptist Church, not just a challenge for the church body. We know what God wants us to do. But what about you today? Do you need to step out by faith and do what God wants? I trust that you will, and I trust that as God has laid this vision for 2018 upon my heart, and shared it with the staff and with the deacons and now sharing it with you as a church that we can get up from this place assuredly gathering that the Lord has called for us to preach the gospel to the South Pacific. And we're taking those steps to make it happen. The preceding message was preached from the pulpit of Bible Baptist Church, Oak Harbor, Washington. You can find additional information about the church and our publications ministry on the web at bbcoakharbor.org. For further assistance with specific questions, please feel free to give us a call at area code 360-675-8311. Thank you for listening. Our prayer is that you receive the blessing from the preaching of God's word.